Andrew. <laughs> and as you think about succession, would you ever consider having Greg and Ajit join you on stage at future annual meetings and allow us to ask questions of them and Ted and Todd as well so we can get a better sense of their thinking? That's probably a pretty good idea, and we've talked about it. We have, we have Greg and Ajit here, and any questions that anybody wants to direct on them, it's very easy to move them over. And, and uh, so we, we thought about having four of us up here. And, we, uh, uh, and this format is not set in stone at all, but, uh, uh, because you, I can tell you that Actually, the truth is, Charlie and I are afraid of looking bad. Those guys are better than we are. <laughs> the, uh, you could not have two better operating managers than than uh, than Greg and Ajit. I mean, they, it's just fantastic what they accomplish. They know the business is better. They work harder by far, and and uh, and you were absolutely invited to ask questions that, that to be directed over to them at this meeting. Uh, I don't think, uh, yeah, this, this format will not be around forever, and if it's better to get them up on the stage, we're, we'll be happy to do it. Ted and Todd, uh, they're basically not going to answer investment questions. We, we regard investment decisions is proprietary, basically. They belong to Berkshire. And uh, we are not an investment advisory organization. Uh, so it, that, that, that is counter to the interests of Berkshire for them to be talking about securities they own. It's a counter to the interest of Berkshire for Charlie or me to, to be doing it. We've done better because we don't publish every day what we're buying and selling. I mean, it, 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 uh, if somebody's working on a new product at Apple or somebody's working at a, on a new drug or they're assembling property or something of the sort, they do not go out and tell everybody in the world exactly what they're doing every day. And we're trying to generate ideas and investment, and we, we do not believe in telling the world what, we, what we're doing every day except to the extent that we're legally required. But it's a good idea. Charlie? Well, one of the reasons we have trouble with these questions is because we're, Berkshire is so very peculiar. There's only one thing like it. We have a different kind of unbureaucratic way of making decisions. There aren't any people in headquarters. Uh, we don't have endless committees deliberating forever and making bad decisions. We just, we're radically different. and. It's awkward being so different, and, but I don't want to be like everybody else because this has worked better. So I think you're just going to have to endure us. <laughs> we, we do think that it's a huge corporate asset, which may only surface very occasionally, and depending very much on how the world is around us. But to be the one place, I think, in the world almost, where uh, uh, somebody can call on a Saturday morning and, and meet on Sunday morning and have a $10 billion commitment, and nobody in the world doubts whether that commitment will be upheld, and it's not subject to any kind of uh, welching on the part of the company that's doing it. It's, it's got nothing involved other than Berkshire's word, and, and that's an asset that every now and then will be worth uh, a lot of money to Berkshire, and I don't really think it will be subject to competition, uh, so uh, and Ted and Todd, in particular, uh, are an additional pipeline and have proven to be an additional pipeline 
in terms of uh, facilitating uh, the exercise of that ability. I mean, they, they, things come in through them that for one reason or another uh, I might not hear about otherwise. So they've exp they have expanded our universe. In the markets we've had in recent years, that hasn't been important. I can see periods where they would be enormously valuable. Just take the question that was raised by the fellow from Winnipeg about weak covenants and bonds. I mean, we, we, we could have a situation, uh, who knows when, who knows where, or who knows whether, but we could have a situation where there could be massive defaults in uh, the junk bond type market. We've had those a couple times and we made a fair amount of money off of them, but Ted and Todd would multiply our effectiveness in a big way if such a period comes along or some other types of periods come along. They are, they're, they're very, very, very useful. Uh, to Berkshire. Uh, uh, the call happened to come in on Friday from Brian Moynihan, of, of uh, CEO of Bank of America, and has done an incredible job. But, but we, have, we, have, we have a better chance of, of uh, getting more calls and having them properly filtered and everything appropriately filtered. Uh, uh, the next time conditions get chaotic uh, than we did last time, and that's that's important. Charlie, yeah. well, I do think it's true that if the world goes to hell in a handbasket, handbasket, that you you people will be in the right company. We've got a lot of cash, and we know how to behave well in a panic. Uh, and if the world doesn't go to hell, are things so bad now? <laughs> and I also want to report that your vice chairman is getting new social distinction. I've been invited during this gathering to go to a happy hour put on by the Bitcoin people. <laughs> and I've tried to figure out what the Bitcoin people do in their happy hour, and I finally figured it out. They celebrate the life and work of Judas Iscariot. <laughs> Is your invitation still good? <laughs> <laughs> well, Bitcoin, actually, on my honeymoon in 1952, my bride, 19, and I, 21, uh, stopped in Las Vegas. We just got my aunt Alice gave me the car and said, have a good time, and we went west. So we stopped in the Flamingo, and I looked around, and I saw all of these well-dressed, they dressed better in those days, well-dressed people who had come, in some cases, thousands of miles away. And this was before jets, so transportation wasn't as good. And they came to do something that every damn one of them knew was mathematically dumb. And I told Susie, I said, we are going to make a lot of money. <laughs> I mean, imagine people going to stick money on some roulette number with a zero and a double zero there and knowing the percent. They all could do it, and they, they just do it. And I have to say, Bitcoin has, re, has rejuvenated that feeling in me. <laughs>